Welcome to How Does an Early Stage Venture Capital Fund Evaluate Projects? Hello, my name is Paul Raftery and I'm a director with Projects RH based in Sydney. And today I am joined by Jean-Michel Flock, who is an, the executive chairman of Flock International. Jean-Michel is an experienced international investment banker with many years of experience, including sitting on credit committees and investment committees. Among his long list of duties, Jean-Michel is a director with Sapien Ventures and the Australian chapter of Karatsu. Jean-Michel is one of the very important people who makes those critical investment decisions whether to invest or not to invest. At Projects RH, we work with valued clients, including investment visa applicants, who seek the support from early stage venture capital funds and such funds being operated by Sapien Ventures. Jean-Michel, it is my pleasure to welcome you with us today. Oh, Paul, it is also my pleasure to be here and to assist to your, and uh, try to answer to your question. Thank you, Jean-Michel. Today, I would like to discuss with you the world in which early stage venture capital funds make those all important investment decisions. For many years, I have sat on the other side of the table from the fund executives with my clients, trying to understand their drivers and how we can improve our presentations. As you would appreciate, it's not just about good impressions, but we need to convince fund managers that we can deliver. We know that we have several clients in common and people we work with who are looking for these opportunities. Most of our clients are seeking funds because they have had successful rounds with angel investors and are working towards an IPO. So we come to a early stage venture capital fund to seek pre-IPO pre funding. Jean-Michel, what are the critical factors that motivate a fund to invest? Uh, Paul, uh, they, we're expecting to see a first class material I mean, preparation and uh, market is today very, very competitive. Uh, there are so many uh, funds and so many uh, companies who are asking uh, to raise seeking funding and uh, consequently everything should be prepared. For example, your firm uh, project RH uh, prepared this kind of financial models for the clients, including uh, an information memorandum called IM, also a pitch desk with a piece of one page paper uh, with all the pro uh, why the investor should invest, one page teaser, bit the same, and uh, including a video of seven or eight minutes who can uh, show the strength and the uh, competitiveness of this company and why the investor should invest. Uh, I think it is very important for uh, uh, the venture capital and uh, to understand that uh, we are professional managers and there is a lot of work to be do, to be done. And also we are responsible. We are uh, of the proposed investment and we need to be prudent on the decision and to advise. Consequently, it's also important that the applicants understand understand that uh, we are spending time and money um, in uh, this uh, preparation and also uh, they have uh, we need to have access to uh, internal analysts and uh, specialized consultants in some industries and all this uh, is not always uh, free of charge correct and uh, at the same time we are to provide as advisor the top class material, uh, material and uh, description of uh, all the various projects and industry. In reviewing the application, it's not only uh, to have to take account of the success of this idea, but also the quality and the leadership of the company, uh, the leadership of the board who are managing this company, and who are the advisor and who are the consultant of this company. So we need to look uh, with prudence uh, of the budgeting 
and uh, be realistic on that. Again, when you look at a company, we need to identify uh, all the strengths and uh, uh, how this company is strong and can be um, surviving to a competitive environment. So we will try to uh, look at the financial factors, but also the operation, the manufacture, the distribution, the production service, etc. The sale and marketing, it's very important. Wow, thanks Jean-Michel. So what are the drivers for an early stage investment fund compared to those of a, a normal investment fund or a, a, an investor in an IPO? How do they know what's different? Okay, you're perfect. A good question. And there, we need to classify what it is. Okay, if we speak about early stage venture capital, limited partnership provided by fund managers and investors with support, they will support to help and stimulate an early stage venture capital investment. They will invest at very early stage. And the benefit include the tax exemption and on uh, some shares to be uh, provided and so on. In the case of more uh, advanced venture capital called VC, venture capital VC is a form of private equity financing that is provided by the venture capital firms or the funds to start up early stage company and emerging company uh, that, that have a potential to have a high growth potential and attract the investor in which the growth will be uh, coming from the annual revenue of the company and the scale of the operation and the number of employees that they have. The venture capital firm uh, or fund invest in early stage uh, with equity and take a risk. The venture capitalists uh, take on the risk of financing risky startup. As you know, there are a lot of startup who uh, fail and uh, because the startup have high uh, uncertainty, especially today with depends on the industry and uh, with the climate, political, economic and so on, climate. The VC investment has a high rate of failure. But uh, the startup also are uh, usually based on innovation technology or business model that are usually from high tech industries such that IT called information technology and clean technology and biotechnology. Now, if we speak though about the third point is uh, IPO. IPO is more in advance when the company is already mature and they would like to be, they were private, they want to go to float and to become uh, uh, public. So the process uh, of a company to raise equity and uh, capital by offering the shares in the, to the public, and that take a lot of time and a lot of preparation as an investor may be able to get access to the shares in the IPO. So that's an investor who decides they can look, this company is very mature, big, big chance to succeed and to make a lot of money. So they will invest in this IPO in, uh, they can go to invest through a broker eventually. Thank you, Jean-Michel. As you know, we work a lot with companies that are sponsoring people who want to immigrate or stay in Australia particularly under investment visas subclass 132B and 188E. And one of the requirements for them is that they raise money from an early stage venture capital fund. So for a 132B, it's $1 million, and for a 188E, it's at least $200,000. The early stage venture capital fund may not be the only source of finance, but it is a necessary one. Do the applicants receive any special treatment from the fund because of their status or is it simply they need to compete with all other investments opportunities which the fund has? Yes, again, you are a specialist in this area and uh, it's um, quite complex and need to have advice, people like you and other lawyers and so on. And uh, it's very important that uh, the money for investment in uh, immigration visa uh, 
uh, uh, applicants need to be going to the right direction, correct? So sometimes there are some uh, various uh, potentiality of investment. Some are, are going to the right secure, like bond or sec security by cash. Other can be investing in real estate and other can be investing in one part of this fund. And this needs to be controlled and regulated. So that means that the, 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 the fund manager or the advisor need to go to uh, the money need to be put in funds were fully regulated controlled by the government and uh, the, the money could not be we are going to help the client to get a full immigration permanent visa and so on for him and his family consequently this is a very serious business and uh, it's also controlled by the government thank you jean michel Jean-Michel, do you have any concluding remarks? Concluding remark again on this uh, business, it's the same, uh, small or big, uh, you need to be very well prepared. You need to be uh, ready to have some very good uh, advisor like uh, uh, Project RH, who will <clears throat> help you to uh, promote your uh, pitch, your teaser, the goal, the strategy. You need to have a goal, you need to have a strategy, you need to more that you can be, be strong in this market, competitive market. You should show your weakness, but more the opportunities, why your company is going to grow, and uh, you, that your management is already in place, that the personnel is already in place. And again, your company has a study, uh, the cash flow, financial report are done, the marketing and the sales is done, and the operation and man man manufacturing distribution is, is ready or exists already, has already performed, and the products that you have are better than the others. You are competitive, you know. Thank you, John. That is the life. <laughs> thank you. In this market. I'd like to thank yes. you for joining me tonight. Um, and before we go, I'd like to say, to ladies and gentlemen in our audience, we have a webinar on Invest and Stay in Australia on 19th November, that's a Thursday at 8 p.m. Sydney, and we would welcome you to join us at that occasion. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. My name Thank is you. Paul Raftery, and I am a director with Projects RH, based in Sydney. And today I have been with John Michelle Flock, chairman and executive, chief executive of Flock International, and a director with Sapien Ventures. John Michelle, thank you, and good night. Thank you and good night to you and to everybody listening to this system. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, goodbye for now. <laughs>